Hey everybody, it's Jim from Cigar, Cigar, Cigars. Today I'm reviewing the Drew Estate Undercrown Maduro 10. And it's called the 10 because it is uh, the 10th anniversary celebration, kind of a reboot, if you will, of the Undercrown line. And the story of the Undercrown line is one of the more interesting tales that I think circulates in the cigar world. And it goes like this. Drew Estate was a very successful, a pretty new company back in the late two, like in 20, 2008 and around there. They hit on a real popular cigar with the Liga Privada cigar. And they were having a tough time keeping up with demand on it. And to make matters even worse, they had a policy where the folks working on the tobacco assembly floor could smoke all day and smoke whatever they wanted. So the Liga Privadas were a favorite and that was really chipping into the uh, supplies. So what could Drew Estate do? And they said, sorry, no more Liga Privada. So the tobacco floor workers got together and started fooling around with different blends, so the tale goes, and came up with the Undercrown, Maduro, which was the original of the Undercrowns. And after a couple of years, somebody in the management at Drew Estate said, it's really popular with the employees. Why don't we look at maybe marketing that as a brand? And hence the Undercrown was born. This is one of the more impressive looks to a cigar with the banding and so forth, but yet it isn't pretentious. It's kind of cool looking. It has this uh, ribbon that goes over the top, as you can see here, and then a lower band, and then the main band on it. So I'm gonna get this thing taken apart and we're going to get it lit up and see if it uh, tastes as good as it looks. I've got the less functional portions of the decorations taken off. And I did keep the band on. We'll talk about that a little later. But I wanted to talk about the specs in this cigar. This is a Toro size. And this goes for around, I think, about 13 or 14 bucks. So it is, it is not a cheap cigar. The Toro size was actually named the number one cigar of 2022 by Cigar Journal. The wrapper is a, is a Mexican San Andres wrapper, which is the same as the regular Undercrown Maduro, but they say this has is a higher priming. The binder on this is Connecticut Broadleaf, and on the regular Undercrown Maduro, it is a Connecticut Habano leaf. And the final difference is the filler on this is billed as all Nicaraguan, and the original Undercrown Maduro was listed as part Brazilian mixed with Nicaraguan. So there's some differences between this and the regular Undercrown Maduro, if you're wondering what the differences are. Okay, I'm going to get this down far enough where I can give you a good report on it. I will see you in a minute. I got to say, I, like, I really do like this cigar a lot. I'm, I'm going to take the band off here because I want to also show you something cool about this band, if I can negotiated properly. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. Oh, whoop, 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 here we go. So it has an outer band on it and then also an inner band, kind of a la Padron a little, a little bit. Um, and it all says thank you on the inside, which is kind of nice. You're welcome, Drew Estate. What I really like about the cigar, construction has been very good. It's burned well. There was some canoeing early on, but it's really a pretty challenging day. It's a little bit breezy out, and it corrected itself fine, so, so no issues there. No cracking or anything like that. Draw was, I, in the previous two that I smoked of this, I was very impressed by the, the draw. This one, not so impressed, but certainly acceptable in, in what I would actually call a good draw on it. In terms of flavor, I really like what they did. This is a Maduro. And the San Andres wrapper is tricky because it can be a little bit bitter and a little bit flat tasting, lacking any sort of sweetness at all. And also when you combine it with a Connecticut Broadleaf, that's a tricky combination there. But something in here lends some sweetness to it. There's definitely some cinnamon, baking spice overtones to what I'd consider woody and, and earthy taste as the primary taste, but also some sort of thing like plum and raisin, that sort of thing for just a tiny bit of sweetness. So overall, really good combination. I like the cigar a lot. As I mentioned, it's pretty pricey. I think this, this particular Vitola is probably 
at least 12 bucks, maybe up to 14 or 15, depending on where you get it. So it, it certainly is a cigar that better be good. And I think it matches that expectation. Let's talk a little bit about boldness. It really kicked in strong. It was pretty peppery the first third, but since then it's settled in. And I'm gonna say overall, it's really an eight. It is by no means overpowering or too strong or, or too bold. It's really a nice, very nice combination in that respect. Overall smoking enjoyment, I'm gonna say nine. It's not the greatest cigar in the world, but I gotta say, it's, it, it definitely is worth trying if you, especially if you're an Undercrown fan or a Liga Pravada fan, give this a try and I think you'll probably enjoy it. So that's it for today. I will see you next time from Cigar, Cigar, Cigars.